Racing fans, welcome to a massive episode 18 of the big Group 1 racing show for the racing season of 2016-17. slash There'll be four Group 1s ran this Saturday, three at Caulfield as part of Blue Diamond Stakes Day and one in Sydney which will feature the Mighty Mare Winx going for her 15th straight Win. Now episode 18 is in two parts. This is part one and in this part one of episode 18 I'll preview the Futurity Stakes and the Blue Diamond Stakes. Two of the three group ones being ran at Caulfield this Saturday. So let's not muck around, let's get straight in to part one of episode 18 of the Big Group One racing show. So the first of the group ones being ran at Caulfield this Saturday is the iTalk Travel Viturity Stakes ran over the 1400 metre distance. Let's have a look at the rest of the information and field right now. Of course the race we ran this Saturday the 25th of February just like every other race I'm going to preview in this episode of course the race will begin at 2 50 p.m of course it's at caulfield and you can watch all the action on racing.com seven two free wear channels or sky racing one as a pay tv option this is basically a rematch of the cf all stakes a couple of weeks ago right here at this very same race course caulfield so uh, that does uh, stir a bit of debate uh, whether or not the uh, CF4 stakes is worth having at Group 1 level, considering this is exactly the same race uh, just uh, two weeks after the uh, the All stakes. But uh, anyway, that's not for me to decide, and I'm not really sure about uh, my opinion on that issue anyway. But here is the, uh, the field. Blackheart Bart won the CF4 stakes a couple of weeks ago, goes in favourite to this race, strong favourite at $2. You then have Termi Loose, who did surprise in the CF4 stakes, is uh, backed by the punters at around $7. Palantino is at $9. Tosin Startum is at $13, as well as uh, Ecuador. You then have Lucky Hustler at $14. He's our Rockies at $19. Attention at $51. And then finally, Fast and Rocking holds the largest odds of the field, uh, backed by the punters at $71. So that is the field. Let's now have a look at the field in depth. We start off with number one, Black Heart Bart. Of course, a Darren Weir trained horse. Brad Ruler will be aboard once again. It's coming out of Barrier 6, of course. Like I mentioned before, it won the CF4 stakes a couple of weeks ago. I actually tipped it to win that race, and it uh, sure did deliver. That's for sure, of course. Uh, it came second in the uh, Australian stakes at Mooney Valley. That was uh, first up this prep, so uh, the CF4 stakes was uh, second up. This is its third uh, race of its prep and uh, it's strong favourite uh, it's going to be the one to beat in this race like you saw when I had a look at the odds number two lucky hustler Darren Weir trained horse also with Damien Lane aboard it's coming out of barrier four it's first race uh, of its uh, prep it came seventh out of the 15 horse field in the Gold Coast in the MM Cup uh, over 1400 metres it then came 10th out of the 12 horse field at Caulfield in the CF or Stakes. It's had a very poor start to its prep, it's no question about that. Normally does well at Caulfield, I was quite surprised that it was uh, third last in the CF or Stakes. That was a bit surprising, so I guess the question has to be raised. Is it losing its touch a little bit? I tell you what, I think um, I don't think it's going to be up there. I, I think it. I think it is. I think it's losing its touch a little bit. I'd be very surprised if it's up there in the top three in this race. Number three, turn me loose. Uh, Mari Baker and also Andrew Fossman is the trainers of this horse. It's coming out of Barrier Five, and Kieran McAvoy is aboard as it has been for the last two of its starts this prep. It came seventh at Mooney Valley 
and then went on to come second in the CF4 stakes. That was a bit surprising for me. It was at large odds. I didn't really expect it to place, to be honest. So it was quite an impressive run. It actually had the lead before uh, being swamped by Blackheart Bart, who, of course, ended up winning the CF4 stakes. So, look, I think it can finish top three once again. Of course, it's the same race course. Um, maybe a little bit of an easier field, maybe, than the CF4 stakes. I don't know. That's for everyone else to decide. Uh, but it can definitely be up there in the top three. Of course, it won this race last year. We cannot forget that. So, uh, and, and, of course, it was its last win. It uh, hasn't actually won since that fraternity stakes last year. So, look, it's probably up there in the chances. It should be a, uh, a top three contender. Not sure if we can take it up to Blackheart Bart. Blackheart Bart may be a little bit too strong, but who knows? It did win the fraternity last year. Number four, Toast and Startum. Darren Weir is the trainer, and Craig Williams is aboard as the jockey. Of course, uh, Alan was, in fact... Uh, the jockey in its last race in the Fiam, which was in fact uh, way back in last year, so he goes off and Craig Williams comes on. It's in, uh, it's coming out of Barrier Two, and this is its first race uh, of its uh, prep, so it is resuming. And uh, look, I think it'd just be happy to get through. Uh, it this race is a bit out of its win range. It's more suited to uh, the 800 to 2,000 metre distance. And uh, if it gets through this race uh, okay, then I think the Sydney Carnival may be next on the agenda for Toast and Startum. Number five, Fast and Rocky is coming out of Barrier 8, and uh, Regan Bayless is aboard in its first up race of its new prep. It came last out of the seven-horse field in the Ruberton uh, on the 11th of February. So, of course, that was a couple of weeks ago on CF or stakes day that was over the 1100 meters it hasn't actually won uh, at the 1400 meters yet so uh, look i think this race is going to be far too tough for fast and rocky number six is palantino down we trains this horse mark zara is aboard it's coming out of barrier seven didn't really have the best uh prep last prep i must have admit besides that uh, group one uh, Maccabi Diva uh, win at uh, Maccabi Diva Stakes win at Flemington uh, last prep. Uh, it didn't really have the best prep. Uh, come 13th, uh, which was last in the Epson, and then uh, came 11th in the Contella, and then 8th in the McKinnon. Uh, it uh, resumed uh, in the Australian Stakes at Moody Valley, came 4th out of the 9 horse field, which wasn't too bad, and then it came 4th in the CF or stakes over the 1400 metre distance. So not too bad of a start to its prep, uh, fourth in its uh, first two races, and I'd definitely consider it for, for a, uh, a place, it's no question about that. Number seven is Ecuador, came third in the CF All Stakes a couple of weeks ago at Caulfield, of course, over the same distance. Uh, has brought some good form from Sydney to Melbourne and it showed that last start so uh, look it should lead early it's predicting that on the speed map and uh, could be hard to catch number eight is he's our Rocky I was a bit disappointed in its CF4 stakes performance I did actually back it as the roughie of the race in uh, my uh, CF4 stakes preview a couple of weeks ago on the big group one racing show but it only came eight out of the 12 horse field I thought it might just be there in the top five so that was a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, look, I'm prepared to give it another chance, though, because it has some good form behind it, including a Turak handicap win at Caulfield over 1,600 metres. Uh, of course, Dwayne Dunn is aboard and keeps... Uh, well, actually comes on for, for Regan Bayless, and uh, Dwayne Dunn probably knows this uh, this horse a lot more than Bayless. So with uh, Dwayne Dunn on board, I'm happy to give it a chance. Of course, it's coming out of Barrier 3. And, um, yeah, probably top five... I'd say. And then finally rounding out the Futurity field is number nine, Attention. Uh, started its prep at Rose Hill, came fifth in the expressway over 1,200 metres. Went to Caulfield a couple of weeks ago on CF4 Stakes Day and came second out of the eight-horse field over 1,400 metres in the Autumn Stakes. Oak Door won that race. This is a much tougher race than uh, its previous race, but uh, has its claims and... Uh, Normally does well over this distance. Okay, on now to my tips for the Group 1 Vaturity Stakes over the 1,400 metres at Caulfield on Saturday. The first Group 1 out of four Group 1s being ran on Saturday. The first of three at Caulfield, as you all know. I'm sticking with Blackheart Bart. I think Blackheart Bart will win this race. Of course, it uh, 
was uh, a pretty dominant winner in the uh, CFO stake, uh, stakes. Uh, Malagara uh, actually was uh, expected to take it up to Blackheart, but never really did in the end, and uh, it was a pretty good uh, win there from Blackheart, but a couple of weeks ago. So back at the distance, uh, at the same racetrack, uh, up against the same field in some ways, I think it's going to be too strong. And um, it's, uh, of course, coming out of Barrier 6. And uh, Brad Ruler knows this horse very well. So I think Black Heart Bart will be the dominant winner in the Futurity Stakes for 2016. Last year's winner turned me loose. I've put uh, this horse at second. Uh, like I said, a surprising run in the CF All Stakes. I didn't expect it to place. Uh, so I was quite surprised with that. And because of what I saw, I think it's top three worthy. So turn me loose is second for me. I've put Palantino in as uh, as, as the third place horse. Uh, it came fourth in the CF4 stakes. As I mentioned before, fourth in its first two races this prep. I think that's a pretty decent effort. Of course, uh, it is a horse that's probably trying to get back to uh, its, uh, I guess, its old form where it was doing so well. Of course, it, it, it won that uh, that Group 1 at Flemington, uh, the Maccabi Diva Stakes uh, last prep, and that was really its only best win of, of that prep. So, uh, look, I think it was a good performance, uh, an overall good performance in the CF4 stakes, and I think it will come third for me. So that is uh, Palantino third, and rounding out my tips for the uh, 2017 Futurity. And my roughie of the race for the Futurity for 2017 is Ecuador. Uh, like I mentioned before, has brought some good form from Sydney to Melbourne. It showed that in the CF4 stakes where it came third, and uh, I think with the form that it has behind it, I think it's uh, it could be a chance to, to maybe um, take it up to the likes of Black Heart, Bart, Palantino, Turn Me Loose, those type of horses, and, and maybe surprise. Who knows? Uh, of course, uh, it's a Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bolt trained horse, and, um, well, Gay would love to win this. It's no question about that. Okay, on now to the main race of Saturday. This is the Group 1 Ladbrokes Blue Diamond Stakes. This is the race for two-year-olds. I'm very excited about this race. Of course, it's ran over the 1,200 metre distance. And uh, this is where the two-year-olds get to make a name form for themselves. It's the only group one for two-year-olds in Melbourne. And it is a very, very big race at Caulfield each and every year. Of course, you can watch all the action on Racing.com 7 and Sky Racing 1. 4.10 is when this race kicks off. Let's have a look at the odds in the field. We start with Catchy at $6. Craig Williams will be aboard. Property had a good run last start. Is at around $7 as well as Talib and also Parade. Jukebox is at $8. At $8.50 we have Formality. Rumours is at uh, $18.00. We then have Taking Aim at $21, Wait for No One at $34, Azil is at $41, Blondie at $51, at $61 we have Marehib, uh, Soso is at $61, Aspect at $71, Willsbid is at $91, and then finally Sheer Madness, who uh, was an emergency but will come in because Spoils has been scratched, is backed at $151. So that is the Blue Diamond Stakes field for 2017. That is the odds, of course. This is the race for two-year-olds. Let's get straight into having a look at the field now in depth. Number one is Property, a Robert Smerton trained horse with Joe Marira on board as the jockey. Craig Williams does come off and he comes on, of course, uh, an overseas jockey coming from overseas to run on Blue Diamond Stakes Day. Barrier 3 is the barrier. It's won its uh, last two races heading in to the Blue Diamond Stakes. Uh, one of them was the Blue Diamond Preview and then the other was the Blue Diamond Prelude. Of course, uh, they were some great runs there, both those races at uh, pretty good odds too. So, uh, look, it was a beautiful run at Caulfield last start. It's all three runs were at Caulfield. The step up is no issue. Uh, no question about that. The step up journey, no issue, no issue at all, and uh, it's definitely right in this with the form it has. It's a uh, a lovely two year old male horse. Number two is a Zell. Uh, Tony McAvoy is the trainer. Barrier one is the barrier, and uh, Regan Bayless comes off 
and Kieran McAvoy comes on to be the jockey for Azell in the Blue Diamond Stakes of 2017. Came second in the Blue Diamond preview a uh, few weeks ago in the uh, later stages of January. In fact, it was on Australia Day to be exact, and it came fourth in its last start a couple of weeks ago over the 1,100 metre distance in the Blue Diamond Prelude. Uh, it was uh, running pretty wide in that race, so it did quite well to come fourth in the end, considering how wide it was. It could never really get into where it probably wanted to go. Uh, it could have a better run this time round, considering it's coming out of barrier one, it will be close to the rail. So that might help it a little bit and might give it a little bit of a better run and maybe show what it's actually really, really like and what its potential is really like being close to that what that rail. However, you got to hope that it doesn't get boxed in. So, uh, look, I think it's a placing chance. Number three is Duke Box. Siren Ma is the trainer, of course, a, uh, a famous trainer of Jamaica, of course, who won the Caulfield Cup last year. This horse actually does wear the same colours. It's coming out of barrier four. Craig Williams comes off. Luke Nolan comes on for this race. It actually has the advantage because it's one of two horses in this race to have already, won, already ran and won at the 1,200 metre journey. So that is pretty impressive. Uh, it's won its last two races. It's only two races. Its first was at Geelong over the 1,100 metre distance distance on Geelong Cup Day, uh, sorry not on Geelong Cup Day, it was actually in the early stages of January uh, and then uh, it came first in the two year old Inglis a few weeks ago. So this horse is in red hot form, I think it's definitely a big chance to uh, claim a top three place and uh, if not, it's definitely top five worthy, no question about that. A very good horse this one, a very good two-year-old Bay Colt male horse. Number four is Parara. It's a, uh, a Peter and Paul Snowden trained horse coming out of Barry 11 and Kira McAvoy comes off. Blake Shin comes on for this race. In its last two races, it's come first at, uh, over the 1100 metre journey at uh, Rose Hill. It then went to Caulfield on CF4 Stakes Day and the Blue Dime Prelude and came second to Property. Uh, had uh, a lot of speed, it came home very strongly in that uh, Blue Diamond Prelude and it of course only had to settle for second because uh, Property was able to hold it off. But I think it's in the mix, if it can if it can run down the straight that strong, I think it's definitely in the mix, uh, it's definitely top five worthy. Number five, wait for no one, a David and B Hayes and T Debenig trained horse who is coming out of barrier 10 and uh, Regan Bayless comes on for Damien Lane for this ride. It came third uh, out of the 13 horse field in the Blue Diamond Prelude a couple of weeks ago. Has already been beaten by a few horses already running in this race. So uh, that's, uh, I guess, uh, those horses who have beaten this horse have the upper hand. May lead early, and if it gets away, it may be hard to catch, but I don't think it will, I think. Uh, if it leads early, it probably will be caught. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, is, uh, it is at uh, rather long odds at $34. Wait for no one. Number six is Aspect. Uh, Tony McAvoy trained horse. Luke Curry comes on for Kieran McAvoy, who was the jockey at its uh, last start at Caulfield a few weeks ago, where it came seventh out of the eight horse field over the 1,000 metre distance. It's coming out of barrier 14, which is a pretty wide barrier. It never really got into the race last start, so uh, look, it's only had one run in the lead up to this. Uh, I can't see it being up in the front. Number seven is So So, a Mick Price trained horse who has uh, Mark Zara aboard as the jockey. It's coming out of barrier two, came six out of the 13 horse field at Caulfield a couple of weeks ago in the Blue Diamond Prelude. It was up there as one of the front runners, but then it just started to drop back a little bit when horses started to uh, to catch it. So that's a little bit of a concern for me. Uh, stepping up to uh, the 1,200 metres, I'm not quite sure, of course. It is backed by the punters at around $61. So, look, I can't really see, see it being up, being up there in the front. Number eight is Taking Aim, a Peter and Paul Snowden trained horse. Barrier six is its barrier. Huey Bowman comes off. Of course, uh, he's going over to uh, to ride Winks, so he won't be aboard this horse, but Craig knew it will. 
And uh, look, uh, it came second in its last race. In fact, it's come second in its last two starts, uh, but second at Flemington uh, last week. Uh, it came home very strongly in that start, which was uh, pretty impressive. It hasn't won a race yet, but uh, it could be a chance to end up in the top five if it comes home strongly and uh, and catches a few. Number nine is Marie Hibb, uh, David and B Hayes and D Dabernig trained horse who is coming out of barrier 15. Stephen Arnold is aboard as the jockey and uh, had a big win at sale last start. It beat uh, a very small field of uh, four horses. Uh, a lot tougher this race though, it's no question about that. Uh, especially when it's amongst a big, big field with uh, a lot of other impressive horses who have ran in uh, in the Blue Diamond Preview and Preludes, etc. So look, it may be a slight chance to surprise, but uh, I, I don't know. I'm a bit, uh, I'm a bit up in up in the air about it. But its last run was pretty impressive at sale. Number ten is Will's Bid. Came tenth out of the thirteen horse field in the uh, Blue Diamond Prelude a couple of weeks ago. Had Damien Oliver aboard. He comes off, and Damien Lane comes on. It's coming out of barrier sixteen, and uh, it's only had one run this prep. So look, I think I'm going to pass. It is. Backed at uh, rather large odds, $91. Doesn't really have the form compared to some of the other two-year-olds in this race. Number 11 is the favourite, probably the one to beat, to be honest. Catchy has won uh, all of its last three starts. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, it won the uh, Blue Diamond Prelude. It beat Property in a race... Uh, uh, last year in the early stages of December that was at Mooney Valley of course uh, a different track here at Caulfield uh, look it started at the back and flew home last start that was a very impressive run at uh, Caulfield a couple of weeks ago in the uh, Blue Dome Prelude three wins from three runs it's going to be up there no question about that number 12 formality Ryan Moore is aboard it's coming out of barrier 12 and it came first in its last race over the 1,000 metres at Caulfield and the Chairman's Stakes was fast out of the gates. It just settled a little bit and then uh, it fought it out with Spoils uh, down the straight. Of course, Spoils has been uh, scratched. We know about that. Of course, it did end up holding off Spoils. It was a, uh, a pretty uh, pretty interesting run down the, down the straight. It's definitely one of the chances, though. It has some good speed. It probably will be one of those horses who will be out leading early and um, who knows what will happen. Number 13 is Talip. Uh, it's got Damien Oliver aboard as the jockey. Craig Williams has been aboard this horse its last two starts. Of course, he's aboard Catchy, so he won't be aboard this horse. Damien Oliver will be. It's coming out of barrier eight, and it came second in the Blue Diamond Preview in its last start. Uh, it was second in a close one to Limestone. It's one of the main chances with uh, its uh, fast finishing. I think it's uh, going to be up there in the top five. Number 15, Rumus came fourth in the Blue Diamond Prelude in its last start a couple of weeks ago. Tony McAvoy is the jockey. Dwayne Dunn is aboard. It's coming out of barrier five. Uh, has uh, actually won its first ever race in the early stages of 2017. This is a lot tougher, this race, uh, especially with a larger field. So, uh, look, it's, uh, it's at odds at a about $18. They're giving it a chance. It has uh, it has got some consistent form. Four first, first in its last three races. Uh, could be up there. You never know. Number 16 is Blondie. Uh, Brenda McCarthy is the trainer and Chris Simmons is aboard as the jockey. It's coming in at barrier nine. Only the one win in its first ever race a month ago. Hasn't really run enough to be an actual threat in this race. Finally, number 17, Sheer Madness. Stephen Baster is aboard as the jockey. It's coming out of barrier seven. Ninth and fifth in its last two races. They were, uh, uh, one of them where it come fifth was the uh, Blue Diamond Preview and the, and the one that come ninth, it was the uh, Blue Diamond Prelude. So yeah, look, uh, judging by that form, I think I'm gonna pass. Okay, time now for my tips for the Group One Blue Diamond Stakes uh, over the 1200 meter distance. It is a uh, a rather hard race to uh, to tip a winner. Of course, Catchy is probably the most outstanding horse in this race. Three wins from three of its uh, runs. Pretty impressive. Uh, I'm going to go away from Catchy though. I'm going to go Jukebox. Uh, one of two horses to have ran over the 1200 meter distance. Marehab is the other one. Of course, uh, the one that uh, won pretty convincingly at Sale. But look, Jukebox in its last two races has been, have been, they've been pretty impressive wins, I think. And uh, considering that it's won over that uh, distance, the same distance that it's got to run 
here, especially at Caulfield as well. We've got to note that it was the English uh, two-year-olds uh, at Caulfield over that uh, 1,200 metres. I think you've got to put it in your top three. So I'm going to tip it. I think I think it's going to win this race. Jukebox for me, of course. Uh, it's uh, trained by the same horse who trains Jamaica. I am going to go catchy at number two. Uh, Craig uh, Williams will be aboard, of course, uh, has been aboard its last three starts where it's uh, all won those starts. Uh, it's been impressive, hasn't it? It's been very, very impressive. I can't believe I'm actually tipping against it because, uh, you know, it's been a very impressive uh, horse in its last three runs. I think it's going to uh, really, really fight it out with, uh, with Jukebox and get second only just. And then third is property for me. Um, of course, uh, Joe Marira is uh, aboard as the jockey. It's com uh, he's coming from overseas. And uh, uh, look, it was a great win uh, in the uh, Blue Diamond Preview and Prelude. It's won both those races, which is, uh, you know, the great lead-up races to this uh, Blue Diamond Stakes. There's no question about that. Uh, look, it has been beaten by Catchy before, however, and that's uh, that's why I'm kind of uh, putting it at third. But it's no doubt you have to slot it in your top three. It was uh, a great win uh, last start on CF uh, All Stakes Day. I actually backed it that day, and it ran very, very well. It, uh, of course, uh, held off uh, Prilla, who uh, uh, was coming home pretty strongly. And my roughie of the race, it was quite hard. I'm going to go Pra. Um, of course, it is backed by the punters at about uh, $8, so maybe you probably would say that's maybe not roughy status, but you could put a couple of bucks each way, and if it gets up, you'd probably get a, a decent amount of money back, in my opinion. So, look, um, it came home very strongly. It nearly beat Property, although Property did hold it off. It did come home pretty strongly in its last uh, last run at uh, Caulfield, which was the Blue Diamond Prelude. So, look, I think it's in with a bit of a shot here. I think uh, it should definitely finish top five, and you never know. It might surprise. It might even win this race. It's uh, my roughie of the race for the Blue Diamond Stakes for 2017. And that is it for part one of episode 18, the Big Group 1 racing show for the racing season of 2016 slash 17. Thank you very much for watching. Of course, uh, don't forget to like, comment and share this video. Subscribe because coming up is part two of episode 18 of this show. Of course, that will feature the final uh, two Group 1s of Saturday. Of course, the, uh, the chipping, which features Winks and uh, the last of uh, the Group 1s at Caulfield, which is the Oakley, which is a, uh, a massive field. So do stick around for that. Uh, until then, I'm Jacob. Bye for now.